Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 8th of September and this quick preview of the week ahead beginning the 11th of September. Before we get on to that, we've had an awful lot of data to digest and news to digest over the course of the past week or so. Um, global equity markets have been by and large fairly mixed. We've seen some decent gains in the DAX but they haven't really been matched by other European equity markets like the Eurostox 50 and the CAC 40, which makes me think that maybe the move higher in the DAX may not be sustained. And ultimately, I think the higher euro is going to act as a headwind for that, along with a weaker dollar. Now, we have seen um, some significant further weakness in the US dollar, and that can be borne out by a significant chart point breakout on the dollar index as can be seen by this Bloomberg chart that I have here in front of me right now. Broken below the 200 week moving average for the first time since April 2014. We've also broken below these previous lows here. More importantly, we've also broken below some very, very key levels in dollar terms um, against a raft of other currencies as well, notwithstanding the dollar CAD when the Bank of Canada um, rather surprisingly raised interest rates for the second meeting in succession. So we can look at the dollar CAD chart here and we can see the significant break lower that we've seen over the past two to three days. But more importantly, we've also broken below this uptrend line that we've got that we've drawn in here from the 2012 lows. But we've also broken below the 200 week moving average as well. So it's important to you know, not underestimate the significance of the break lower that we've seen in the dollar index, given that um, euro dollar as well has made new, new significant highs and looks as if the next level for the euro dollar is this 50% retracement level from the peaks that we saw in 2014, 2000, when we squeezed up to around 139.95, fallen as low as 103.40. A 50% retracement of that is 121.67, 121.70. So that I think is the next key level on euro dollar, and um, I think that's probably going to pose a significant barrier to further gains over the course of the next few days. Even though we have traded just below that um, earlier this morning, around about 121, 120.92. Um, what else have we had to focus on this week? Well, no more changes at the Federal Reserve. Stanley Fisher. Vice Chair of the Fed will be leaving the central bank in October, um, significantly earlier than was than his term was due to end, which was June 2018. He cited personal reasons, but obviously when you price in that and the fact that Janet Yellen is probably not going to um, remain chair at the beginning of next year, that's two of the most senior board members of the Federal Reserve who will not be in situ in January 2018 which makes US monetary policy and the direction thereof that much more uncertain. And that's before you even start to price in the damage caused not only by Hurricane Harvey, but also by Hurricane Irma, which is due to hit the eastern seaboard of the United States sometime this weekend and is likely to probably be much more serious in terms of the damage caused than Hurricane Harvey. Um, we have had a potential roadblock pushed back. The debt ceiling that's been pushed back to December by Donald Trump due to a deal that he's done with the Democrats. But nonetheless, that's just a problem deferred. It's not a problem avoided. And as such, it probably makes any potential rate rise this year for the US very unlikely indeed. And that's before you even factor in the economic damage from the various tropical storms and hurricanes um, with the potential for another hurricane in the Atlantic, Hurricane Jose, following on closely behind Hurricane Irma. And if bad weather wasn't bad enough, um, even though North Korea problems have subsided somewhat, we have the North Korean National Day on the 9th of September and it wouldn't be beyond the realms of surprise to see Kim Jong-un probably conduct another weapons test to ratchet up the tension in that region as well. So when you have to basically factor all of that stuff in, um, you know, it doesn't leave much room for anything else. But it's also a big week for UK data. The pound's done fairly well as a result of the weakness of the dollar. We push back up to 131.40, but there still remain significant obstacles to further gains and a move back to 133, which has really been my long-term target 
pretty much since April, but we have got some important economic data which could help underpin that move higher. And a lot of that is to do with the inflation data, which is due out on Tuesday. That's currently at 2.6%. Now, there is a school of thought that suggests that may well have peaked out. Certainly, I think there is a hope that that will be the case, but certainly higher energy prices as a result of the um, of the bad weather in the US is probably is not helping oil prices. They have edged higher. Brent prices are back above 54 and approaching $55 a barrel. So that's going to put upward pressure on fuel prices at the pump. So we could see inflation start to become a little more sticky as we head into the autumn months. But at the moment, it's at 2.6%. Expecting that probably to remain around about the same or maybe come down a little bit. But more importantly, we've got wages data. Wages data looks as if it could well have bottomed out and could be heading back up again. And if that's the case, if we could see average earnings come up from 2.1, which they were last month, and head back towards 2.2, 2.3%, that's certainly, I think, going to be a sterling positive. One other very key event this week is going to be the Bank of England rate decision. Now, we've already heard Michael Saunders um, make his case, the external MPC member, make his case for a rise in interest rates. And I certainly, given the direction of travel when it comes to monetary policy for banks like the European Central Bank, who are talking about potentially tapering their asset purchase program, the Bank of Canada, who's hiked rates for the second time this year, the Federal Reserve has already got three Fed uh, rate rises behind it. And ultimately, I think it's much harder to argue that the UK economy needs an emergency rate of 0.25%. Irrespective of what you think of the data, we're not at an emergency level. We can afford to move that rate back up again. Nonetheless, markets have no faith, I think, whatsoever in what the Bank of England policymakers say, and in particular Mark Carney. He can talk all he likes about the potential for raising rates or the markets are underestimating it. Ultimately, we've heard that tune before, we've heard that song before, and ultimately, we no longer believe it. That being said, I think the upside for the pound is probably going to be limited to around about that 133 level looking for support around about 129.80, 129.20. Some other key factors to keep an eye out for this week, Chinese economic data, industrial production and retail sales on the back of some mixed trade data. The exports data that we saw from China in August was a little bit disappointing, particularly to the European Union. So does that suggest that maybe we're going to get a bit of a slowdown in the, in the economy in the EU? We'll have to wait and see will the high euro start to cause a significant slowdown in terms of economic growth as we head in to the back end of 2017. We've also got, um, for you um, tech nerds out there, the Apple iPhone 8 launch. And I will be watching that very, very closely indeed. Further signs of innovation. Talk about the launch of uh, two or three extra iPhone 8s, as well as Apple TV and maybe a new Apple Watch. So that's it for this week. So thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.